Well, good evening. A warm welcome to all of you who are here at Tapestry Monday Park. So glad that you are able to join us here for our Canvas 2020 opening night. It's been a long time coming. This project has been in the works for four years, and some of you who are sitting in these chairs know how long that has been, but it's wonderful that we can celebrate and just give thanks for the art that's on the wall that is a commission installed to help us dive more fully into uh, the story of God. So I just want to give you an, just a little overview of what we're going to do for the next hour or so. I'm going to share a little bit of the origin story of the project and, um, and how it came to be. And then we'll invite the artists up, uh, up to the front and then we'll just do a question and answer. We'll get to know their story, their vocation as an artist, and then dive a little bit into the process and also the work themselves. So that should be the next uh, hour. So there will also be a period of question and answer and that kind of stuff. So if you have a burning question at the end of the presentation and the interview, then feel free to raise your hand or uh, ask your question. So that would be um, wonderful. So that kind of gives us an idea of what the next hour or so. Feel free to get up and get some more food or another glass of wine whenever you can. If you do need to find the washrooms, they're through these doors. Uh, women's on that side and men's on that side. So I'm sure you can find your way if you need to. So anyways, so glad that you're able to be here. Let me open with a word of prayer and uh, we'll get started. Gracious God, we thank you for this evening that we get to gather together like this. Lord, we thank you for the gifts and talents that you give to your people for us to craft and make and design and cast vision for and bring to life the things that you put on our hearts and minds. This story that we live in and move in and have our being in, this story that centers around your son, Jesus. And so, Lord, as we gather today, as we hear stories, as we hear the, the process of the art being made and what it means and, and what it points to, Lord, I pray that you would, yeah, deepen our love and gratitude for you, our creator, who makes us in your image and invites us to make things with you and for your glory. And so in Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, it's a special weekend because this weekend at Tapestry Money Park, we're gonna be celebrating seven years as a church plant, which is kind of a really exciting thing. Sunday, if you're gonna join us, somebody's happy with squeaky shoes. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so seven years uh, we've been, uh, we're going to be celebrating. And uh, I think back at that time um, when we were planting this uh, campus, campus, uh, the Tapestry Monday Park, um, you know, I had to apply for lots of different things, grants and things like that with uh, our missional agency. And, and then I put this down as a way to dream about what our church plant would be. And I just want to read that to you. Being guided by our core values of diversity, creativity, curiosity, authenticity, reality, and love in action, we intend to be a neighborhood church that practices hospitality, seeks spiritual renewal, cultivates restorative community, fosters faithful gospel witness, stewards our land well, and celebrates the arts. And I highlight that, celebrate the arts, because that is kind of the heart of our community right from the very beginning, this desire to be a diverse community, a creative community. And so one of the ways that we kind of work that out over the course of our life as a congregation is we did these uh, events called, um, I guess, I'll just name it, it's called Beauty in the Small Things. It's one of these um, events that we put on back in 2018, and Rachel, who is, who's here, helped us to uh, put that together. And it was basically this idea of taking a theme or an idea and having everyone in our congregation create works, whatever it is, around that particular theme. And so we had a really great uh, opening night with our Beauty in the Small Things. That followed after... Uh, 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 with another theme around the idea of home in 2019. So different ways that we've tried to engage the creative life of our community. And then, of course, COVID-19 hit and everything shut down, and I was running, uh, going on my run, 
Um, it was 2020, and everything's shut down, and I'm running, and we're not gathering anymore. And I don't know what came of me, but I was running, and the idea came to me as I was running, Sam, commission and install works of art that tell the whole story of God. <laughs> well, not exactly like that, but this idea of um, commissioning works of art that tell the whole story of God, kind of inspired out of the ancient tradition of stained glass windows. If you've ever gone to a cathedral and you've seen stained glass windows that tell the story of Jesus, so too in a creative contemporary way, we can create these little stained glass windows that tell the whole story of God. And so we put together a, a team, um, Neil, Prinzen was a, a member of that team and continues to be. Albert Westerheis was a member of that committee. Rachel was a member of that committee. And Maddie was a member of that committee. And we kind of dreamed up uh, this project. Throughout that time, we did different things like Artist Speaks. And we had a spotlight where we'd interview artists like Neil and Albert and Olive, who is here. Um, and uh, Maddie as well, and uh, just different ways to highlight the arts in our community and certainly the artists that are um, worshiping with us. And then uh, we came to the point where we're going to, who are we going to commission? And so our committee had a number of lists and names and things like that, and we talked and uh, we came and we landed on the artists that you see today. And I'm really grateful to have worked with and um, and get to celebrate their, their, their creativity and their art. And so I'm really grateful for their work. And we'll get to hear more from them. Much of this was initiated from Tapestry Money Park and certain grants that we've gotten. But most recently, I do want to say that um, with the help of the Vital Worship Grant from the Calvin Institute of Christian Worship, uh, we're able to put on events like this and then finish this project and have other community art projects such as the one that you see in the back there where Adam spearheaded this. Uh, talk to him about it. <laughs> it's a beautiful piece that we also use for our Good Friday service and um, there's so much in there that is, can we, we can unpack for days. So it's awesome. Okay, well, enough of me talking because I think we want to hear from the artists. And so I'm going to invite Joy Banks and Salmo Swan. Troy Terpstra, who is one of the other commissioned artists, he's not available to be with us today. He's actually surfing on the west coast of Washington <laughs> State with cousins. And so I said, hey, that's probably better. But I did interview him on Zoom, and we'll hear from him uh, via video later uh, when we hear from all the artists. So, oh, and then we do have Leanna Klassen here. So why don't we give them a warm welcome? Come up front, and that'll be awesome. Bear Barnettson, I think I forgot to mention you as well. Yes. Good looking panel, eh? <laughs> All right. Um, well, thanks, guys, for coming today. And first of all, thanks for your beautiful work, your earnest efforts, and uh, the wonderful things that you've created for us in light of the theme of uh, telling God's story. I wanted to just start, uh, there's three things that we wanted to get a sense of, and just your own personal journey, your vocation as an artist, and then to talk about the pieces specifically. So we'll just kind of go in turn. There's a couple of mics here that you might have to pass uh, around. Um, but uh, why don't you first introduce, well maybe we'll start with you, Bear, and then just go down the line, or start with Joy, yes, okay. There, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, why don't you just share with us, introduce yourself, and, uh, and how did you end up doing what you're doing? And uh, tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey as well as an artist. Hadi, so in the Sastrosli, Dantemusli, Nadle was then Yinka Dene Daketh. Snechelia Yudagi, Snechelia Behunji. I'm really grateful to be here with all of you. In my traditional language, I introduced myself there. My name is Sascho, 
She is Big Bear in my Daket language. I come from the Dantemu Bear Clan and Daket Nation. And I'm grateful to my creator. I'm grateful to the land. I'm grateful to my elders here where I get to speak in front of. It's a real privilege. Um, that's actually how I got here as well. Um, Sam is my elder. I've known Sam since I was very, you know, I was in squeaky shoes running around. And uh, he, you called me Salmon. Yes, I did call him Salmon. It was, it was a good time. And that's uh, it's still in my phone. It still says Salmon in his calling. Um, and uh, so, yeah, mom, my mom, uh, Cheryl Bear, and uh, Salmon uh, go way back as well. <laughs> and so my mom reached out to me and said, hey, Salmon wants to do a thing, and I recommended you. And I was like, okay, that's usually how it goes. And um, then I met with Sam, and uh, he told me about uh, this project where he was wanting to have the face of Christ in indigenized, and immediately I could see it in my brain. It was, uh, it doesn't always happen. It, it's, uh, it was a rarity for me. And I could see it almost immediately. I was like, Oof, okay, the rotation of the figures, the face in the middle, how do we make this work? This piece is alive already, and creator is alive here, and he's working and moving, and how do we embody this and show this you know, with uh, indigenous form line? I was really excited about that challenge. And um, yeah, so that's where we got started. The, the piece itself, the more I, I prayed and, and meditated and thought about this, like, how do I um, capture this, the, the face of Christ in an indigenous um, way, the more I couldn't unsee the, uh, the spirit and the father, the trinity in this piece. And so that's why in the, the piece that you see, it's, behind you here. I'm looking straight I think at there's it. A, so. <laughs> there's an image that we have. We can put it up no. on the screen, Peter. So I'm talking straight to it and as well as all of you. Um, in this nope, piece. The, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, the face of Christ in the center uh, depicted as an ancestor figure with the crown of thorns around him and an eagle on the left hand side in the upward motion and a thunderbird on the right-hand side and a downward motion there. And um, this is what I saw was Sam and I were praying together of what this would look like. How could we bring this to this community um, and indigenize Jesus? And I was like, well, it, it was impossible to unbraid the three of them. They needed to be together in this, in this moving way, in this motion. And so for me, the, the eagle uh, represents uh, the father. Uh, for us in Dakef, it's Yudagi, is the being up on high. Is, that's our name for creator. And the eagle soars the closest, the highest to creator. And so I wanted to use this being to represent that and the being up on high. And the thunderbird there is representing the spirit as the thunderbird is a spiritual being. There's no evidence of a thunderbird out there. You won't find it in um, archaeology or anything, but it, for us it is a spiritual being and it's talked about in that way. Uh, same thing with different other, uh, like the CC youth, and there's a few other ones like that. But the thunderbird, it represents more of us on the northwest coast and kind of the gift there. It is one of the gift bearers. And which is also one of the ways that we um, as believers speak about the Holy Spirit. It is the gift. It is a spirit that comes to us. And it helps all of us. So I was, for me, it made sense immediately to use this being as to, to depict the Holy Spirit. And the motion of them, the three of them moving together in that kind of way there was what I saw when I was speaking with Sam and we were praying together. But how can we ha partner with, move with our creator moving in this community and on this land in this specific place? And I was really excited about that, and I still am. I'm really excited to be here with you guys and to talk about this and to share this, and that it's all come to fruition. It was a, it's been a, a journey. And here we are. And here so, we are. Yes. Yeah. All grown no. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no longer in squeaky shoes. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. All right, I'll pass it on. Yeah. Thanks, Nigelia. Uh, hello, I'm Anselmo Swan, and. Um, I'd just like to start by thanking the community at uh, this church um, for in 
including us and um, giving us this opportunity to share a little bit of our story and our art especially. Um, I was born in Vancouver and uh, I've been making art my entire life. Um, so regarding the, the pieces, I was given the fall and flourish and um, I really struggled with how I could present images that um, weren't what you would usually expect. I, when I, I remember looking at the first uh, topic, the fall, I, I was thinking of lots of European painting and what would traditionally be thought of as um, people, uh, end time, judgment, uh, the results of the fall. Um, so when I also thought about flourishing, it brought to mind what, what people think of as flourishing, what a lot of times people hope to get um, from for myself, I think what um, I was uh, hoping to, to get from faith, just to, to be successful, to, to flourish personally, to have mm -hmm. career success, uh, to be able to uh, achieve goals. Um, so for both them things, I, I wanted to go deeper and, and go uh, to the what I thought was at the root of, of both images. So for the fall, uh, I referenced a passage in Jeremiah which really spoke to me at a, a very uh, pivotal time in my life where I was really challenged to go deeper in my faith and I, I could relate with what God was telling the Israelites about the dangers of idolatry and, and why they were struggling so much. He had told them they had dug broken cister cisterns, uh, cisterns that cannot hold water. It was a, a practice of futility and it was what was at the root of their pain and, and their struggles. And uh, I really saw myself in those verses and it was a personal challenge to me to go deeper. Uh, so at the time also, um, uh, I was introduced to uh, Timothy Keller and um, he really unpacked uh, that, those verses for me and, and lots of other things too. So at the time it was for me really timely. He was a, a great blessing. Um, you know, artists speak of visual influences, uh, but mm. for me, he was a, a spiritual influence and um, a, a mentor as well, a spiritual mentor. So um, that was my, my take on the fall. I, I looked at, at what was at the root of the problem. Um, and I wanted to use an image that people could relate to that um, was an everyday object from our times. Um, a lot of times in the Old Testament, there's imagery and things people struggle with. And so I felt that the message was just as relevant for us today for, for where I was, um, but I, I used a, an object that people could relate to from our, our culture uh, that was expressing the same idea. Uh, in terms of flourishing, I wanted to, uh, again, just go deeper, um, go beyond superficial flourishing, uh, materialism, I think what a lot of people hope for. and. Um, where I was at that time, at that season in my, my own spiritual journey. Um, and so again, I was challenged to, to go deeper, to um, go to uh, the, the source of flourishing, that we were made to know God. Uh, like St. Augustine says, we were made to know him and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in him. And that was where I was at that season in life. I needed to go deeper into my faith and uh, um, Try and, and find my ultimate fulfillment and happiness in, in knowing him. Uh, yeah. You know, it's interesting, these images of wells and thirst, they're all through the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Uh, and I think that um, they really address what is at the root of our, for myself, where, where I was, this, this thirst and this desire that I had, that I was trying to fulfill in other things and um, the ultimate fulfillment that I was looking for. And um, there's a, a part in the drawing, very subtle, where you see the nail marks um, in Christ's wrists and, and flourish in that drawing. Um, and it, it's a very small detail, but it, for me, it just says so much about um, what it cost him to, to reconcile us to himself and how much he loves us. And that in that is where I would ultimately find uh, the, the quenching of that thirst I had. Uh, in my life. So um, I was, uh, it, it worked out really well to be included in this project, to be able to share those um, things that happened to me that I experienced and uh, 
in my own journey of faith and uh, to hopefully share that with others and maybe encourage them uh, in some way. So, um, yeah, I think we'll pass on. Thank you, Anselmo. And those are drawings. <laughs> so first of all, to be in the company of these artists, wow, so, I'm so honored, really. You're all so amazing. Um, and to be in this mid-century modern style church is amazing. <laughs> and to be in a church that honors the arts. It's in my experience. I'm 62 years old, and I haven't seen it very often. So it's very cool. Thank you. Um, so I was at, first of all, my name is Leanna Clausen, and I'm a, I'm a musician who became a painter who became a potter. And so that's what you're seeing is my ceramics here. And I was asked to do the theme of Christ. And so the first thing that came to mind for me was, um, the first thing I thought about was I've been in Israel a couple of times, and I thought of the colors of Israel. If any of you have been there, you know what I'm talking about, those sort of the browns and the golds and the reds. And so I wanted to use a, a clay that would be what Jesus would have used, would have had in his hands, because, of course, they didn't have plastic and, and uh, all the things we use now. They just had um, clay to hold their clay vessels to hold everything. So I wanted to use a clay that was a warm uh, red clay. Um, and then when I think of, one of the things is for me, when I think of Jesus, when I think of cities, when I think of, of people, I always think in colors. So places I visited, I'll always remember them in colors. And so when I think of Jesus, I think of, again, those warm colors. And so I think of the red golds and the, uh, the reds and the black walnuts and the, um, the beige colors, and because to me those are warm colors that invite me in. Maybe it's my red hair and <laughs> those colors, I don't know. But that's what I think of Jesus, because I have always felt, mm. uh, as a follower of Jesus, has known him a long time. He's always been that safety for me and that mm. warmth for me. And so that's what I incorporated into these pieces. Um, and in the shapes, um, I, I created it like the cups are uh, tiered, teardrop shape so you can hold them like Jesus surrounds us we can surround those cups with our hands that's how, what I was thinking mm -hmm. um, the thing about ceramics is it takes time you cannot rush uh, ceramics so we are still waiting for the font it's still drying there's a platter coming as well a bread platter um, there's a number of more bowls I brought two bowls just because uh, there's more coming. <laughs> but like process. I say, we have to wait for the pottery for, it's, you know, it's sort of like us as humans, isn't it? Like, you know, we, if it cracks, we start again as a potter. And, you know, that's what I've had to do with a, with a few of these pieces. But um, it's been an amazing challenge for me. I have absolutely loved it. I'm so thankful that you've allowed me to be part of this. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll add my hello from the crew and um, just say again what an honor it is, as others have said, to be invited into this project with you. It really feels like a joint project with these artists, but also with you as a community, and it's been a real pleasure. So thank you. And just to say as well, your community, I'm, I keep hearing things. I live over in Vancouver, but more and more just your support for the arts and incorporating um, r the richness of worship and bringing that alive in this context. Your reputation is getting out there, so just want to say <laughs> well done to that. So thanks. Um, I, for this project, I did printmaking, so I got the first one, the uh, creation over there, and then the one that's consummation over here. Uh, and, oh yeah, there they are up there. These are two plate lino cuts. So it's, I carved two different plates uh, and then I printed it. It's basically like giant stamps, um, and, and that's where we where I've gotten to. So I was grateful when Sam first approached me, and then he mentioned creation because I had had something rumbling even over co during COVID. Somewhere during that time, the the passage about the spirit hovering over mm. the chaos actually gave me a lot of comfort. <laughs> Um, in my own life, there was some chaotic things as well as what was happening in the world. And I, I thought, wow, the spirit can hover over all of this 
confusion and maybe even make something new. That was my hope. So I'd already had something kind of, some sketches I had done, and then they continued to unfold. I wanted to create pieces that um, I knew they would be small in relation to the sanctuary. So maybe you see something, I was hoping, like a blossom. The first one is called Blossoming Creation. The second one is New Dawn. I thought that one may look like a flower budding um, from afar, but then lots of details when you get closer in. And in fact, I also was hoping it might be something that the little ones, you might take over and look and discover different um, pieces and characters and see what they can see. So just a few of the elements as well. Um, because I knew this was kind of the beginning the beginning of the story and kind of the end, I have these hands that are in both, oh, just the this, this significance of the creator that's holding the whole story. Um, and I mentioned the Holy Spirit hovering. I first had a dove there, but there's so many doves in churches that I thought you just might not see it. <laughs> so I thought, what's the bird that ho hovers around here? It's the hummingbird. And I had heard someone say, that in Latin America, um, the hummingbird is a symbol of the spirit too. So with all of that, I, I made it a hummingbird. Um, and there's the alpha over the head there, and there's the omega in the final one. Again, it's the alpha and omega beginning and the end. Um, and then I wanted to make depict creation as kind of this unfolding, this blossom that's mm. unfolding. And even being made, there's this thread that comes out of the hummingbird's mouth, almost like making a, a, a lace doily or something. I wanted to m make it a making, partly because probably because I'm an artist, um, but also the show the creator making, but the creator made with words. So that's why it's coming out of the mouth. Mm -hmm. And um, rather than showing kind of the breakdown of the seven days, I wanted to show what you also see in Genesis 1 and 2, which is just the interconnectedness of all of creation relating to one another. So you've got Adam and Eve connecting to creation, and I've got trees and, and animals from all over the world, as well as some of the like, planets in there, even down to, I had hoped, what's going on underneath the ground, what we're discovering now with the my mycelium network, is that what they're called, the mushrooms? Like I've tried to put that in and the sea. Um, one thing I will point out that you wouldn't notice, there's one bird that you won't see anywhere now. It's down at the bottom next to kind of talking to the crane. Does anybody, I don't know if you can see it from afar or anybody want to guess what it might be? might be too far to see. A dodo. A dodo, yes. Really? It okay. is. <laughs> I put a dodo there because this was interesting to me. The dodo bird was on one island only and during colonization, um, the colonizers, they went in and the, the birds started disappearing. But they said, oh, God would never let anything go extinct that God created, which is really interesting to me. It's a, your, how your theology can influence your creation care. Uh, and since I was doing creation, I wanted something there that speaks a bit of a reminder of what we were given to Stuart um, and some of the lament of what's gone now. Um, so the bird that's speaking to it is a whooping crane, which is actually on the verge of extinction. So a little commentary that wow. <laughs> I stuck in there. Oh my goodness. Um, on this end here, um, of course in Revelation it speaks about there's no night because the, the light is, emanates from the throne. So that's these, that's kind of the light going out. There's also language of these trees um, that are for the healing of the nation that are on either side of the river. There's a river and there's, there's too much imagery in here, frankly, but may, maybe you'll have fun figuring it out. Um, but I was thinking a lot about the healing of the nations and uh, it was part of my prayer and holding this and how might we depict this? This is just, these are symbols that ho I hope may give us hope. So what would that be like? Um, so I have on one side healing of, of creation, um, images of reconciliation in scripture. You find, remember that this is more from Isaiah, but the wolf laying down with the lamb. So I didn't do that literally, but I've got a chicken on the back of a fox. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, you know, the, it, there's that same passage speaks of a, a little child leading them. So this little child with these predator animals behind them. I, for me, it was all of creation joyfully. Um, celebrating that moment. On the other side, I have, I, I was wondering, 
how do you depict, like, there will be no more tears there, and the sense of um, healing that comes, and also part of that is justice. Um, how do you depict that? And I was also thinking about, there's language in Revelation of all of the nations bringing their treasures. Um, and with those two together, I thought I could just make happy people or <laughs> something. But that doesn't really bring that the tears were wiped away. So these figures on the right, they're all um, dances of defiance. They're, um, so the first one is Miriam um, from the Old Testament. When they are delivered, I loved the first thing they did is they pulled out their tambourines and started singing and dancing. To me, says they were doing that before. They had tambourines with them. So they carried these, and then they, their, their dances came out there. The second one is um, South African gumboot dance. So I learned that in South Africa, um, back during apartheid, they would, and before that, they would, um, in the mines, they had people from many different language groups and tribes that would uh, work in the mines, and they intentionally did not let them communicate. They weren't allowed to speak to each other. Um, but the miners de developed a whole form of communication through stomping, um, and their, this dance became their form of communication. So again, that's part of the, the culture that comes even out of hardship that's beautiful. And so that's there. The next one is probably the most recent. That's um, a, an image from an Iranian girls dance group. Um, when I was creating this a couple of years ago, you might remember there was the, the woman who, who didn't have a head covering and she was killed. And there was this, the rising up of around women's rights. And so these girls courageously posted a dance, a hip hop dance that they did. Um, and then of course there's the Coast Salish drummer um, just depicting the, the, the reality of how we have also, um, you know, we used to ban potlatches and so much of the culture, but that's now being recovered, um, and the, the the wealth of that culture that's mm. present is there as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, and of course there's angels. That's no big surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of the detail. I'll just Beautiful. Leave it there. <laughs> um. I had a whole list of questions, but you guys answered it all. <laughs> um, I, we will see Troy's uh, interview soon, but before we get there, I kind of want to ask, what do you love about what you do as an artist? And share a little bit of the love that you have for the, the craft that you engage in. I just kind of want to hear a little bit of that. So what is it about what you do that you love? No time to think on that one. <laughs> mm. Joy, you want to start this one again? <laughs> one detail, but Sam asked me, can I share just the one detail? Sure, yeah. I know I gave lots of details. But Sam wanted to know from the last one, um, there's this image of a garden city in, that's, that's spoken about. It's not just going back to the, the garden, yeah. but there's a garden city. That was really hard. I didn't know how to do that. But I put that, if you can go back to that last slide... Do you mind doing that? Is that too tricky? At the bottom, it's hard to see as well, but I, I tried to make these buildings that were unique. I was thinking of them blocks from the different cultures rather than one kind of building. And then I tried to put like all these gardens interspersed between the dwellings, um, that also the dwellings that don't have doors because there's this idea of trust. A lot of the revelation language speaks of like a, there's no gates because there's this w abundant welcome and trust. So. You you wanted that, so I had to put it in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I've had enough time to think now. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about what I do is that I get to be a storyteller. I get mm. to tell stories. Um, I think about one of my favorite quotes by the boss, uh, Bruce Springsteen. He said, I hope that... Uh, in my storytelling, that you'll see yourself and then go tell your story. And I was like, I heard that. I'm like, oh, I love that. I'm trying to embody that in most of my work. And telling stories. And also, I feel like when we look at scripture and we see Jesus, I'm like, how does Jesus fit in our stories? And how do we go live that? Mm. How do we go tell that? Mm. And incorporating and intertwining, braiding his story into ours. And what does that look like? Mm. 
and that question. So I guess maybe storytelling and asking questions is what I love the most about what I do. And then painting and getting uh, messy is another fun part too. Yeah, so. yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, for myself, um, yes, I think making art is in a way kind of a, a journey. Um, I, I sort of relate it to hiking sometimes. It can be really difficult, really challenging, but there's a, a destination, a place that you're hiking to that is worth the effort, uh, that makes the, the arduous trip worthwhile. Um, so there are times when I'm making art where things come together and I feel that I've made something that has a sense of wholeness, that's a, a sense of visual truth. Um, and that is just personally really fulfilling and, and very rewarding. Um, Maybe I'll, I'll just add very quickly um, in sharing my story about going deeper in, in my faith. Um, one of the biggest struggles I think that I wrestled with for a long time was um, making my identity, my art, and my career. And, mm. uh, and that led me to, to do things like destroy works that I, I just wasn't satisfied with instead of giving them time. Just putting so much pressure on myself to try to be the best or, or to get something out of being an artist and exhibiting and showing in other parts of the world that it wasn't meant for. Uh, so the, the gospel frees, uh, freed me uh, uh, going deeper into that reality. And mm. instead of being an ultimate thing, it's become a really good thing and I'm able to enjoy it. So I'll, I would just add that to my, my story. Beautiful. Um, well, first of all, God is the original abstract painter, right? And so, when we create, it's like he's given us permission to think beyond just this little box. And I love that as a creative. And with, with ceramics, you know, you take a lump, of a lump of dirt, lump of mud, and you create something functional and something beautiful, something that can, you know, be beautiful and functional at the same time. And that, wow. Um, and it, um, I went through the journey of cancer and... When I started, I was painting at the time, and painting helped me um, work through and was my diary of through my, my cancer journey. And then when I started doing um, pottery, it was like this healing, you know, tactile, therapeutic thing that I did that just, um, it just brought so much healing into my life. Um, they say that when you do crafts or pottery or um, painting or anything where you're working with your hands that it releases endorphins in your brain that make you happy. And it's really true. It's like God's, God wants us to do these things. And mm -hmm. I, I just love that about being, yeah, a creator. Awesome. Creative. Beautiful. Yeah, I can relate to all those things, you guys. Um, I just love making. I, I don't know, since I was a kid, I've enjoyed that. And so that's... I don't know how to sum it up more than that, <laughs> maybe. Um, for me, I think art is also a way for me to sit in contemplation. Uh, I just feel like so much of my life and the world these days, images go by really fast. So making something means I have to sit with the concept or whatever I'm exploring, and it's slow, and I just keep going over it. And, and, and so it's, it's a way to get it kind of deep in me. So often the things I... I'm exploring an art for me are the things that I know I need to spend more time with. And, and it also, I, I like being able to see things in new ways or things coming together in ways I hadn't expected. And so art becomes a place for that um, new way of seeing. After I've tried to, you know, I don't know, whatever it would be, draw a tree, then I start noticing the trees or, you know, so it, it becomes the gift mm -hmm. of, of seeing um, through making so. yeah awesome we're gonna hear from troy to guy give you guys a break thank you so much but uh let's can we play the video peter That's awesome i'm a painter uh from uh, bellingham washington i went to regent um, and studied theology and art there Who doesn't love to, you know, ripple down some drawings? <laughs> I've been doing it my whole life. Ever since I sat down, I, it's this sort of unconscious act. So 
to, I don't know, I love to make, I also do improv, um, improvisational theater, and I think there's a lot of crossover between that, just, um, you know, to make, to make something out of, you know, look at a blank canvas and to make a thing is exciting. Yeah. You know, to, to make up a, to go onto an empty stage and make up a play is exciting, it's thrilling, it's like, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of failure or false or, or poor attempts or think times you scrunch it up and start over. And I think like embracing that as a very, very powerful thing when you can really begin to embrace failure. I think as a church, I think we are called to embrace failure. I think you kind of, you go and you attempt and you kind of attempt knowing that your attempt is gonna be probably inadequate, but that somehow weirdly paradoxically gives you more confidence and more freedom to keep trying more and more. So I think, I think we're all called to that in the Christian life. And I think in the artist life, maybe it's almost easier because you have more clear failures. You have more clear results. You have an empty canvas and then after a while it has a bunch of paint on it. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, I think that's, that's a, it's a great joy to be able to do that. And I think in, in our own ways, we're probably all, called to some version of that. Can you play the next one? Thanks. The pieces I've done are um, Promise and Presence. Promise is the Old Testament one and Presence is the, is the New Testament themed one. Presence was the first one I did, which is thinking about Christ's presence in the church and in the um, uh, sort of thematic packet that I received was talking about the sacraments. So it felt like a very rich theme to dig into. So uh, the images of uh, three figures in the middle or 12 figures all together, symbolizing the, you know, obviously the 12 disciples, um, the church, the tribes, what have you. Um, around the Eucharist at the center and the holding the gospels up high and then sort of some sacramental images around them. You have marriage, you have confession, you have baptism, you have uh, worship, you have a worker who's literally like in the process of building the church itself which, around which everybody's in. Um, and then all through it, you have uh, the kind of vineyard, the image of the vineyard and the bunches of grapes, the ripe fruit, you know, taking that imagery from the gospels of the church being called to be fruitful and, um, you know, yeah. So, and it's all sort of interwoven together in, which was the, the big challenge of the piece, trying to fit 12 figures. I usually work very large. So, so this is a challenge to fit these 12 figures in to this condensed sort of area. And then the second piece I did was the promise piece which where I wanted to echo that idea of the 12 figures, but it's more, you know, this is more of a position of sort of being unsure, sort of the church in procession, which is also true of the church now, but very emblematic of the, of the, you know, the call of the, of the Jewish people as they wander, as they are unsure of where they're being called to a profound level of faithfulness in the midst of all kinds of difficulty. And then there's the symbols of manna, you know, God's provision. And there's the symbol of the, 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 uh, the kind of go, the ram. And there's a figure with the knife hearkening to the uh, sacrifice of Isaac. And I, I studied uh, Rene Girard. So the idea of sort of sacrifice and movement towards Christ giving himself as the lamb is a really, really powerful trajectory in my in the theology that's important to me. You see a little boy in the front with a slingshot. That's you know the idea of David, um, and so yeah, just this idea of these figures sort of in this uncertainty as they move through, you know, totally in faith towards an uncertain but um, towards the promised land, I suppose. So yeah, there you have it. Those are the, and the themes are, and the, again, 12 figures meant to sort of echo each other. So the first, I saw the first 
three themes. What the first three themes of the Old Testament that you divided up are creation, creation fall, fall, and promise. And promise, yeah. So I looked at those and thought, okay, creation. Here's the first couple of chapters of Genesis, and then fall. There's the next chapter of Genesis, and then I thought, okay, now I got the rest of the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, this is, and then I looked and I looked at the size of this thing, 11 by 14, and I was like, okay, I gotta put, I gotta put the entire history of the uh, Jewish people in in 11 inches by 14 inches. And I was like, maybe I'll, st maybe I'll start with the New Testament one. <laughs> that was the, that was very intimidating. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's obviously an exaggeration, but. Um, so I turned my attention to the second one first, because that one, I felt like I immediately had a vision for it. I immediately thought of sacraments. I immediately thought, okay, baptism, the Eucharist. I love, I mean, for me, like the, the Eucharist as the sort of creative act at the central of, of the, of the mass, as the Catholics put it, like is so powerful symbolically, truly like just the presence of God with us. It's just. So I thought, okay, I can. I want, I want that to be at the middle, and it's almost like once you have this thing at the middle, then it, things can start to kind of grow around it. Baptism over here, marriage over here, even the idea of the vines and the grapes felt like immediately like it comes out of that, like fruit. You want leaves, I want green, I want life, because this is the summit and source of our faith. This is things come out of this. This is where we gather. This is where we gather around Christ, and we and we. We, we, we find our unity and we are sent. We're called to this table every week and we're sent from this table every week. And like, it's just a very, very powerful image. And I feel like it almost feels like it, it did unlock a thing in me where I feel like, okay, this is a, there could be a whole series of these and there could be a, so many different ways to interpret this powerful image. So it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to reflect on that. And then I chose a material which in a sense, colored pencils was a strange option because it colored pencils feels like I'm a painter. It feels more like something you give to kids to make a drawing. But I felt like, okay, I knew it was small and I knew I wanted it to be detailed in a way that I thought you know, pencils and pens were the kind of way I learned how to make art. So it felt like kind of going back to something. And I don't know, like, I don't know if I had to, do it again if I would choose those, but I think it was a very interesting experience. As I was saying to you earlier, it's very, you can't erase them. You can't, you're kind of committed, which is more like being in an improv scene. Once you've said a, a thing, you've made an offer is what it's called. You know, you've declared that your scene partner is a brain surgeon. You can't get out of that. Now that's what they are. And you know what I mean? You're stuck with that offer. So it felt like a sort of level of commitment to the lines I was making that called for a lot of a bit of planning and a bit of care, but also it was kind of like, okay, this is the road you're on and you're going down it. So that was good and um, difficult and challenging, but also I really liked that piece. And when I was done with it, I was like, okay, I can't really do this again. Because that, it was also, it just took a long time and I felt like I, um, I don't know, I also felt like it was a very different feeling the promise piece, the kind of piece of, of a, almost a more stark feeling, a feeling of being in the desert, of being called to something that is mysterious and hoped for and that we have faith for, but maybe isn't always felt or, or experienced, you know, the call of, which is a very crucial part of our faith journey also, you know, feeling like we're in the desert, feeling like oh my gosh, how long are we going to be here? How long is this going to be? When am I going to, you know, not feeling the fruit, not feeling the the kind of abundance of life, but maybe feeling like this is a slog and we're, but we're still, we're still stuck together. We're in this together. We're this group called to live peacefully together as we march forward into something that's, that's more unknown. And the, the colors in that theme too are sort of, you know, they're muted, they're sandier, it feels a little drier, it feels a little more like everybody's supposed to feel a little bit thirsty in that, you know, a little bit like, yeah. kind of, you know, like you're on a road trip and it's been a while since you've come to a rest stop kind of a feeling. 
<laughs> the, there's a line that I have from G.K. Chesterton. And he had this long poem called The Ballad of the White Horse, which I thought of as I was doing the, um, uh, the, pr the promise piece, which is um, in The Ballad of the White Horse, he goes, um, he, the, uh, I think it's King Alfred or something, is called to by the Virgin Mary to um, raise an army to defend England from the Vikings or whoever. And um, he wants to know if he's going to win before he does it. So he wants to know, he basically wants to ask God, am I going to be successful if I do this? You know, am I going to have success? And he says um, something like, those of the East may read the stars and times and triumphs mark, but the men signed of the cross of Christ go gaily in the dark. Now that idea of going gaily in the dark, if you're signed of the cross, if you're a Christian person, you sing joyfully as you march into darkness. And you, you don't, we don't, we are not given the guarantee of our success in any of our endeavors. And that is not, that is not what God says to us. God calls us to faith, not success. And so this idea of singing boldly as you kind of march into some uncertainty, I really felt that line as I was thinking about, about both of those images. On the one hand, like, when you don't know, you keep going. And on the other hand, thinking about all of the richness, richness that does come, it, it doesn't come because everybody was promised some success. It comes because you had to walk through this unknowing beforehand. And so, I don't know, I felt like that verse or that little line of poetry really, really um, characterized the journey of making these pieces. Again, thinking about like uncertainty and improv and all this stuff. So maybe that's the theme that I, I think really was reinforced as I did as I worked. We're coming um, almost to the top of the hour, but I want to ask if there's anyone that has any questions for any of the artists here. Okay, we have one over there. Can you repeat the question just so that it's recorded, yeah. The materials and process of the piece. Um, it's uh, cedar. I wanted to be very careful to use the cedar plywood there in this piece. Um, but it's uh, laser cut, actually. So I remember when I originally pitched it, um, saying the best way that we could, we could do this um, and have it as symmetrical as possible was to use um, Illustrator and then laser cut it out, and that would be a puzzle piece of figuring that how to go get together that way. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun, and it, I think it turned out really well. But yeah, it's a huge laser cutter. That's <laughs> mostly what it was, and uh, being very meticulous and with that, and then cleaning those up. Yeah, yes, and then hand painted each little bit, and uh, yeah. And given that it was laser cut to precision you created some intentionality around your piece that yes you want to speak to that thank you i forgot to say that earlier um the edges around it are a little bit rough intentionally i sanded them a little -ish, very uh sporadically because because of the precision of the laser cutter and the technology that creates it that way i wasn't able to adhere to one of our valuable teachings on the northwest coast is imperfection because nothing in nature or in ourselves is perfect so our art or anything that we do shouldn't have perfection in it. And that's one of the teachings. So um, you'll typically see it in bigger pieces. They'll kind of nick one of the sides or whatever. Um, but in this one, I uh, sanded the sides, uh, the, the edging around it really um, sporadically to give it that imperfection, but also um, to show this community um, that you can, you're welcome here even if you're rough around the edges, <laughs> like myself. You know, I feel that, you know, particularly when I walk into church, I'm like, yes, you know, I don't know if I'll be welcome in these spaces because I am a little rough around the edges sometimes. We all are. But 
you are. You are seen by your creator. You are loved, even if you're rough around the edges. So. Beautiful. Any other questions? One back there. Um, yes, uh, these are the typical traditional colors that we use. Um, I just did a piece recently um, talking about why we actually use these specific colors, so it's fresh on my mind. Um, the red is one that we talk about is one of the colors that our ancestors can see. So most, most um, indigenous nations will have a specific color thing that they'll say their ancestors. Sorry, I'm talking about the ancestors. I can say great cloud of witnesses if that's more... Um, familiar to you guys, but uh, those uh, folks, <laughs> they can see red, and that's one of their colors here, uh, red and black. That's why we particularly um, portray our ancestors with red and black. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to emphasize that, that, you know, through um, Jesus, we are all called uh, to be children of Abraham in that. And so he is our ancestor, our spiritual ancestor, and then okay, like we're in that line with them. And the, the salmons and the wings um, is also for my own home community and not only what then, it uh, translates to the place where the salmon return. And so adding kind of the symmetry in that and talking about how creator is intrinsically involved and part of the land as well. And we can't separate that, so. Beautiful. Any last questions? I got a question, actually, um, okay. for Joy. How are you so awesome? And like the, the, for me, I'm talking about the symmetry of my piece, but I feel like yours were are also like perfectly mirror each other. How did that happen? And um, tell me more about that process, because I want to learn. <laughs> It was agonizing. <laughs> I learned one thing about myself is I underestimate. I'm a time optimist. And so what I set out to do always takes way more. It was a lot of, lot of trial and error. And I, I look, and this is the hard, I don't know, do you guys find this? I look at it now, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have done that. And, oh, <laughs> that, that, you know, um, that's n next time. <laughs> I love what you say about um, imperfection, because pottery is like that too. <laughs> like it's it's like the imperfection show the artist's hand, which is a part of the beauty of it. So that's very cool. Another one. <laughs> yeah. What is the there's the print number at the bottom, and then the V, the letters V E. Yeah. So um, the V E means variable edition, um, which because of the way I colored, it, it doesn't stand out that much. But I, the the, the color part especially, I suspect will vary um, when I print it. So you, that's you just put that's just part of the printmaking tradition. Mm -hmm. um, if it was gonna be this like black the whole time, the color black ink, I wouldn't put that. But if I have something that I think in the in the in the edition might change a little bit, I would call it VE. Well, that um, is a one. Perfect segue. What Neil is saying is, we want to support you guys. How can we buy your stuff? <laughs> uh, is it's an amazing collection. Uh, 
I, I have one in my, yes, I do have one in my head. I, ha I haven't made up yet more, so if, but if you're interested, you could put it in order. And I'd, I'd like to give, uh, just so for this church community, I'll, I'll, I'll lower the price for you all. Um, I'll give you a discount code. You can find it on, the, <laughs> on my website. I'll, 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 I'll give that to Sam so, um, to make that available. Thank, thank you, though, thank for you. that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we do actually have uh, places where people can find you because, yes, you have a website. Um, Joy, I think I put, I have, there's a slide up there. Also, Leanna has, um, in, uh, you can find her, your, you on Instagram as well as uh, Etsy as well. So why don't you, why don't you each tell, where, where can we find you and, and, and follow? And, well, and For me, the best thing is Leanna Clausen art on Instagram and you can contact me through there but I have um, also I have a website lianaclawson.com and I have another and I'm on Etsy and just contact me if you're interested uh, for me maybe the easiest way is just to to google my name and it'll link you to everything my website and my Instagram and Facebook and all those things so Yeah, so I do have a, a show coming up at the Intent Gallery. That's coming. Uh, the, the reception's uh, May 4th, and it's open to, uh, to everyone. So whoever would like to be there, it's more than welcome to, to, to be there. Yep, I also have a website that I am very proud of. It took me a long time to figure that out. So uh, Randall Bear Barnettson is my website. You can view some of my... I've, I also have prints, not of this one. This is the one and only of this one. Um, but yes, I do have prints uh, of other works available, um, uh, ECM, the Every Child Matters campaign. I do a lot of work with that. So you can uh, check out the orange t-shirts that I um, use on my website. Also, I have a show coming up at the end of the month with Emily Carr. I'm graduating this, this year. Yeah. So, I'm, so I've got a couple pieces in our grad show, which I'm, I'm pretty proud of. So that'll be at the end of the month. It's not Jelia. Excellent. Well, why don't we give them all a hand? And thank you so much for your earnest work, your care, your attention, your um, creativity. I loved, I loved working with each and every one of you. It's been wonderful. So thank you so much. And even Troy, even though you're not here, thank you so much. Uh, I had fun interviewing you too. Anyways, um, let me close with a word of prayer. And then uh, the rest of the hours, you can mingle, talk, have some more food, leisurely hang out, or Make your way home, whatever you'd like, but let me pray and uh, give thanks for this time, yeah? Gracious God, we just give you thanks and praise. We thank you for each of these artists that have given of their time and thoughts and energy and reflection, the work of their hands to bring before us here in this community a way for us to know you and love you and to live more fully in this story that you call us all to. And so, Lord, we thank you for the rich time of listening and learning, and uh, yeah, as we continue to see these works, and may it spur in each of us a uh, desire to create and make and to do what you are calling each of us to work with our hands for your glory, for your purpose. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you.